My name is Adrian Mindell and I'm Professor of Sexual Health Medicine at the University of Sydney and the Chair of the Australian Herpes Management Forum. This presentation will consider the best time and method to take a swab to diagnose genital herpes. Genital herpes is a very common sexually transmitted infection in Australia and can be caused either by herpes simplex virus type 2, HSV2, or herpes simplex type 1, HSV1. HSV2 is more common in women and also occurs more often in individuals with a greater number of sexual partners. It is transmitted via genital to genital contact and many individuals acquire the infection from a partner who is asymptomatic and consequently unaware that they have the infection. HSV1 is transmitted via orogenital sex and in recent times genital HSV1 infection has become more common. The signs and symptoms of HSV2 and HSV1 infection are indistinguishable. However, genital HSV2 recurs more often than genital HSV1. The best way to confirm the diagnosis of genital herpes is to take a swab for culture or one of the nucleic acid amplification techniques such as polymerase chain reaction, PCR. Culture is more specific than PCR but PCR is more sensitive and is the preferred method offered by the majority of laboratories in Australia. Swabs and tubes will vary in appearance according to which laboratory is being used. Microbiological confirmation of herpes simplex is required in order to prescribe PBS listed antiviral drugs including famcyclovir, valacyclovir and acyclovir. Type specific serology is not recommended as all it will do is confirm that the person has been exposed to either or both of these viruses but will not reveal whether the particular signs or symptoms are due to herpes. Why do culture or PCR tests come back negative? The person may not have herpes. There was no virus present at the time. The culture may have been contaminated or there may have been another laboratory related problem. An adequate specimen may not have been taken. In order to understand the best time to take a swab and why culture or PCR are sometimes negative, it is important to look at the process of viral replication. This figure shows that in the early stage of infection, when the vesicles first occur, viral shedding is at its maximum and declines rapidly. So, during the ulcer stage, there is still considerable quantity of virus present, but by the time the lesions are crusted, viral replication has markedly declined. Clearly, the best time to take a specimen is early in the course of the episode. However, this is not always possible or practical. We will now look at the practical aspects of taking specimens during the various stages of infection. It is important to remember that viral particles are usually intracellular. Consequently, areas for swabbing should always be rubbed firmly to ensure that cellular material is obtained. How to take a specimen before the development of vesicles or ulcers. First, let us look at what to do when a patient presents very early, before the development of vesicles or ulcers, and when there may be no signs of the infection or perhaps minimal erythema. Although the skin is not yet broken, it is possible to identify the virus at this time. The swab should be rubbed firmly over the erythematous area, or if there is no erythema, then over the area where the recurrences usually occur then placed in the virus transport medium or PCR tube and sent to the laboratory. If possible and practical, it may be advisable to wait until vesicles or ulcers are present. How to take a specimen when vesicles are present? In order to obtain a suitable specimen, the vesicle needs to be burst. However, it is very important to remember that vesicle fluid is usually teeming with viral particles and hence is highly infectious. Consequently, it is important to ensure that the fluid does not come into contact with open areas on the skin or the eye. Vesicles on dry skin can be tense and when ruptured fluid may inadvertently be sprayed onto the skin or eye. The best way to avoid this is to burst the vesicle with a sterile needle. Place the needle flat on the skin with the open end pointing away from the operator. Gently burst the vesicle. Take a swab and collect the vesicle fluid and then rub the swab firmly over the base of the de-roofed vesicle. The swab should then be placed in virus transport medium or a PCR tube and sent to the laboratory. How to take a specimen when ulcers are present? 
Bearing in mind that it is important to obtain cellular material, the swab should be rubbed firmly over the base of the ulcer. The swab should then be placed in the virus transport medium or a PCR tube and sent to the laboratory. How to take a specimen when crusts or scabs are present. When lesions are crusted, there is usually only a small amount of virus present. In order to enhance the chance of a positive culture or PCR test, it is important to remove the crust and obtain a specimen from the area below the crust. Crusts can be carefully removed with a sterile needle and the area below the crust firmly swabbed. The swab should then be placed in virus transport medium or a PCR tube and sent to the laboratory. We hope that you found this presentation useful. Additional resources in relation to genital herpes for you and your patients may be found on the Australian Herpes Management Forum website at www.ahmf.com.au.